No, I can't be the only one who wants to go fast on a budget. That being said, a custom fuel hat is typically a few hundred dollars for your Mustang. I'm going to show you a much cheaper option that will get you going just as fast. So this right here is the custom fuel hat that I made in my 86. Hopefully you can see that all right. So this is an access panel that I obviously cut in the back of my car so that it's easier to get to my fuel pumps. So this is a stock tank out of an 86 Mustang. Done nothing to the inside of it. It's got the stock baffles, bolts up the same, the lines still come out the top. They're still in tank pumps. So it's actually two 340 LPH pumps in the tank. And I don't have the fuel hat out to show you, but at some point I will do that. This is just kind of an introductory video to show you what I did. And if you guys have some interest and you want to see the rest of it, shoot me a comment, let me know. So I'll show you a little bit better. You can see that it's just a square plate of aluminum and I cut a hole that is slightly smaller than the perimeter of this plate. So on the inside there is a small steel retainer. That's what these screws come up from. So they're threaded into it and they come up from the bottom. And then they go all the way around the outside of the fuel hat. So they hold the fuel hat onto the tank. And then this is some gasket material that I got from one of the parts stores. So inside here, if you can envision it, I've got some aluminum L-channel brackets that are um, on this one. I just bolted them because this was my preliminary. See how it turns out. See if I like it. So, and then uh, just a little bit of silicone because the I didn't have any more gasket material like this left over. So, Sorry for that. <laughs> the next ones are going to look nicer. But at any rate, I've got a couple of bulkhead connectors. So right here is where one of the pumps comes out. Right here is where the other one comes out. And then they Y together and go to my main feed line to the front of the car. So on the inside of the tank, I've got a 340 LPH pump here and a 340 LPH pump here. And I've also got a bulkhead connector for my wiring going to it. And I did 10 gauge wiring, you can see. I upgraded this, so it's on a separate relay. And I actually upgraded that whole system. So my ECU is a little bit different. Um, I've got a ECU from Stinger Performance. So what I do is one of these fuel pumps normally runs all the time, like any Fox Body Mustang. As soon as you start your car, it says, hey, I need fuel, go ahead and run. And then the secondary pump on this turns on when I get into boost. So it says, hey, I got boost, I need more fuel, and it turns on the second pump. And I've got relays that I've mounted to control all that. It's a pretty slick little system, that ECU is awesome. So I've also got, right here is my return line. Now the return line I was going to make a little bit bigger, but I decided to keep it that size. I can't remember if that's dash six or, or what I ended up doing there. I just had some of that left over and I didn't feel like spending a whole heck of a lot more money. The one thing that you have to be careful of on, well, even on a stock Fox body fuel, um, I guess you call it fuel hat. Um, the return line is up so high in the tank and, um, I can't remember who it is. I think it's pro M actually, um, actually did a video on it. They did a cutaway and they showed you what happens when your fuel is being returned to your tank with such a small line. And it's, I think that far off the bottom of the tank it aerates all of the fuel in your tank. So all of your fuel has bubbles in it. And then you get bubbles up into your injectors. So then it's really hard to tune your car because you're not getting a consistent flow rate. So what this return line does, this goes all the way to the bottom of the tank and it actually exits back over in this corner. So all that turbulent flow is not right here where the pumps pickups are because the pumps are straight down from here. And I'll do another um, I'll do another video on that at a later date and time. There is a way that you can fix your stock fuel hat if you just want to eliminate that aerating of the fuel. But um, I'll have to show you guys that after I get out of the tank. Right now, my tank's full of fuel, and I really don't want to pull this out because I'm in my garage and it's going to reek. But uh, at any rate, that is my fuel hat. 
it was a uh, took quite a long time so the fuel tank you can see right here that's that circle is the outline of where the original um, pump sat which was just right here so all I did is I took some tin snips I didn't want to cut on the tank or do anything like that with a power tool because I didn't want it to get hot or cause a fire or anything so what I did is I took some tin snips and I just started where the hole was and I cut a square straight up over and around it's a pretty easy deal and then with the rest of these I used a lot of oil and a drill bit and a magnet so I had magnets all over the inside of here and then I had a drill bit with a bunch of oil on it and I just drilled, took my time. It probably took me three hours to drill all of these hole, holes, and there's only three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of them. Took me a long time, but uh, do it slow. You don't create a lot. You don't create any heat, actually. I mean, it's just very minimal at you know at the most. And I had magnets on the inside and the outside to catch all the metal shavings, so they didn't go into the tank. I of course had a dry tank anyway, so I wiped it all out when I was done just to make sure I didn't have any gunk in there metal shavings <laughs> um, so I just used tin snips believe it or not I've actually got a set of them sitting over here I will show you the tin snips that I used on this project give me just a second So these are the tin snips similar, so these ones are my straight cutters, but I also had um, right angle, or I guess it would be left and right angled cutting pliers also. That way, so I actually cut this all out right through this access hole. Just held them right like this and just cut all the way around the sides. It was a pretty slick deal. And I didn't have to spend X amount of dollars on a new tank, I didn't have to buy a $300 fuel hat. Um, it worked out really good. Like I said, I think the the aluminum that I spent on this, plus these bulkhead fittings, um, I've maybe got 50 or 60 bucks into it. You know, the wiring and the relays, it took time. Um, but then there again, it was a heck of a lot cheaper than trying to buy something that somebody else had already made that was $300 and then put that in and I'm still out, you know, a few extra hundred dollars. Um, well, there you have it. A custom fuel hat for a lot less than $300. <laughs> Hopefully that helped answer some questions for you guys. And if you got any more, leave them in the comments below. I know it took me a little bit of time to decide how I wanted to build this and which way I wanted to go with it. So hopefully that gives you guys kind of a little bit easier time deciding how you want to build your fuel system. I know it's kind of a long road and especially if you're making more than five, 600 horsepower, it's kind of a vital thing. So at any rate... Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, we'll catch you next time.